Ewangelia Jana, rozdział 5, wers 1 do 8. Po tym było święto Żydów, więc Jezus wszedł do Jerozolimy. I przy bramie owczej w Jerozolimie jest sadzawka, zwana po hebrajsku Batesda, która ma pięć krużganków. Leżało w nich wiele mnóstwo chorych, ślepych, chromych, wyniszczonych, czekających na poruszenie wody. Gdyż w czasie stosownej pory do sadzawki wstępował anioł oraz poruszał wodę, a następnie kto pierwszy wszedł po wzruszeniu wody, stawał się zawsze zdrowym, kiedy był obładnięty chorobą. Ale był tam pewien człowiek, mający 38 lat we swej chorobie. Kiedy Jezus go ujrzał, jak leży oraz poznał, że ma tę doległość już długi czas, mówi mu, chcesz stać się zdrowy? A chory mu odpowiedział, Panie, nie mam, nie mam człowieka, aby mnie wrzucił do sadzawki, kiedy poruszy się woda. A w tym czasie, gdy ja przychodzę, Inny przede mną chodzi. Mówi mu Jezus, wstań i zabierz swój materac i chodź. Glory. So, uh, so that was Adrian uh, reading from John chapter 5 in Polish. So let me read it again in English and then we're going to dig into the, the scriptures today. By the way, good morning. Uh, good morning, Adele. It's good to see you watching. I'm so glad that you're joining in. Let me read this from uh, John chapter 5 verse 2. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porticos. In these lay a multitude of those who were sick, blind, lame, and withered, waiting for the moving of the waters. For an angel of the Lord went down at certain seasons into the pool and stirred up the water. Whoever then first, after the stirring of the water, stepped in was made well from whatever disease uh, with which he was afflicted. A man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been a long time in that condition, he said to him, do you wish to get well? The sick man answered, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, Another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your pallet, and walk. Immediately the man became well and picked up his pallet and began to walk. So it's worth just mentioning just here. Um, I, I, I love the NASB version of the Bible. Um, in verse 6, when Jesus says, uh, when, I think it's verse 6, yeah, verse 6, when Jesus says, Do you wish to get well? Um, interestingly, it's, uh, the word there said isn't actually said. It's Jesus is saying, is like continually saying. Jesus is saying, do you wish to get well? So we're going to be having a, a short time in the Word of God this morning. And uh, I'm just checking out the clocks to make sure that I don't take too long this morning. Um, and then, uh, and then after, we've, um, after we've gone through the Word of God this morning, um, the plan is that um, we're going to play another song. And during that song, um, I would love it if you could respond uh, to what's being said. Maybe you have some more questions about what's being said, and maybe uh, maybe you uh, want to just respond by saying, yeah, I really believe that, and I want to follow Jesus. And uh, towards the end of my talk today, I will give um, everyone an opportunity to say, yes, I want to follow Jesus, because it's important that we have an opportunity to respond in that way. And so, um, and so as I'm speaking, um, I, want you to, um, I want it to be highlighted to you that um, Jesus... He loves you dearly, um, and not only does he love you dearly, but he is for you, he's not against you, he doesn't hold anything against you, and he wants to come into a relationship with you today. So let's, um, let's go through this word of God um, uh, from John chapter 5. First, I want to I wanna speak into this thing of, um, I want to speak into this thing of, um, Jesus is saying, and he is continually saying, is saying even today, um, that um, he's asking a question to you today, and he's asking a question to me as well. He says, do you want to get well? Do you wish to get well? Do you, watching, do you wish to get well? Do you want to get well? And it's, it's all too easy that we sometimes look at this and, and we look at um, scriptures like this and we say, well, you know, Jesus, 
um, Jesus doesn't love me because, um, because I've done so much wrong. And so, of course, he's not going to heal me. So why bother praying? Um, maybe today you're feeling like, um, I don't know, sometimes we think um, maybe he's got bigger things to deal with today. Uh, you know, the world is, uh, is really, really aching and COVID-19 is spreading across the globe and Jesus has bigger things to deal with than me. Well, the fact that this fellow just here was sick for 38 years. Was it 38? I think it was. Was it 38 or 36? 38 years. Um, he was sick for 38 years, which means that in, in that culture, um, being, uh, being poorly, being um, like unable to do things, meant that he would have been like the lowest of the low in their society. People would have literally um, like thought of him as less than trash. Uh, they would have thought of him uh, as, as worthless wholeheartedly. And maybe today you're feeling like, hey, sometimes I'd feel like, you know, Jesus might go to Pastor Darren because, of course, he's a preacher. So, of course, he listens to his prayers. Or maybe he goes to, I don't know, <laughs> I almost said Mother Teresa, almost like I was putting myself in that sort of realm, but now I'm nowhere near as holy and as, as close to Jesus as Mother Teresa was, right? Um, but, um, but maybe you might think, oh, you know, maybe um, Jesus would answer the prayer of the politicians, or maybe he would answer the prayer of, uh, of the person who uh, sits and prays every day for an hour. Um, but he wouldn't answer my prayer because to him I'm worthless. Well, let it be said that to those that feel you're worthless today. Um, Jesus is hunting you down. He's looking for you. He's looking for a moment uh, today where he might just turn around to you saying, not said, he, the word there isn't said, it's saying. He is saying, do you wish to get well today? You who feel worthless, you who feel ignored, you who feel like you don't have a hotline to God, do you wish to be well today? Is that where you're at? Maybe, um, maybe it's something really massive in your life that, is, that has gone wrong. And maybe you feel like you're the worst sinner on the planet. Or maybe you just feel like, hey, I've never even said hello to God, so why would he hear my prayer today? Well, I want to say to you that even like this guy uh, had never said hello to Jesus. You know, Jesus approaches him and Jesus approaches you today saying, remember saying, he's saying it still now. Do you wish to be well? And towards the end of our service today, we're going to have a short time where we pray for those that do wish to be well. We, we, we're going to pray for you. We, we want you to respond and say, I wish to be well. And um, it's really great because we've had some really glorious stories in the last two or three weeks where people have, um, have responded uh, to what God is saying on a Sunday or on a Tuesday evening. And, and they've responded in the comments and said, I wish to be well. And then we've prayed for them. And then all of a sudden, like Adele's not taking painkillers for her knee anymore and she's able to take uh, the knee brace off. And then April is able to come off some of her painkillers for her back. Um, and then there's other people, uh, like I think Rose started sleeping again. Uh, just normal sleep on an evening. She's been able to sleep ever since we prayed for her uh, because the Word of God is living and active today. And that's the truth. He is living and active today and He really wants to work in your life. He really wants to be part of your life today and He wants to have an encounter with you. Now, when you get healed today, when you, uh, when you hear the Word of God today, when God speaks into your own personal heart, what's happening right there is He is releasing to you a seed of faith, and he is showing you a sign that today he cares for you. Today he wants to meet with you. Today um, he wants to show you and point you towards Jesus, because Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith. So do you wish to be healed? Do you wish to be healed? Please respond in the comments and we'll try and keep up with them comments and uh, we'll pray for you in a little while. Me and Pastor Harry will pray a little bit later on for you personally to be healed today. Or maybe if you're struggling with sleep, we'll pray for you uh, to get over uh, your struggle with sleep and that uh, the Lord would release peace into your life in Jesus' name. So, that's like my pre preach preach. I haven't even started preaching yet, and you're like, "What? This is great." Um, so um, let me just um, let me just um, dig into what I feel God is saying in the scripture just here. Um, so here's the first thing that I noticed when um, when I started reading this story. So um, so it says in the in the Bible just here that an angel. Let me read it out again. An angel would go down into the water. So it says uh, the blind and the lame and the withered were waiting for the moving of the waters. For an angel of the Lord went down at certain seasons 
into the pool and stirred the water. Okay, it says, whoever then uh, was first after the stirring of the water uh, and stepped in would become well. Okay, so it's worth mentioning. I've done a lot of research this week on this. And, um, and some people say that, um, that this started happening at the birth of Jesus. And so at the birth of Jesus, all of a sudden, uh, people start stepping into this well because the well, uh, the, the pool, sorry, starts to be stirred at certain seasons, at certain times of the year. Um, and and if you look at which um, times of the year it is, um, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more of that in a few minutes. But what would happen is, um, people would um, would see this water being stirred, and uh, and then what would happen is they would they would get into the water, and it was a thing that was continually happening. Apparently, it stopped happening um, about um, 30 years after the death of Jesus as well, because it kept on happening. Uh, Josephus, a historian of the time, said that this was the case. People would go down into the waters when they were stirred, and the people believed that it was an angel that was stirring it. Interestingly, it's in our scripture today, that is an angel that was stirring it. I want to show you today that there is a huge gap between angel and Jesus, okay? Angel comes down at certain seasons. He came, he came down at a particular time of the year every year. And, and I will go into that, um, that thing in a few moments. Um, but he came down at a particular time every year. And then only the first person to jump in the water would get healed. So what's that leave us with? That leaves us with this notion of a load of people. Can you imagine? Uh, can you just picture it in your mind just now? A load of people uh, scrambling to quickly go and jump in the water. And some of them can't walk. Some of them are literally paralyzed. Some of them might be lis- uh, missing limbs and stuff. And you can imagine as the angel comes down, some might say in, uh, in a graceful healing sort of way. Um, at the same time, there's a bunch of other people that don't get the opportunity, right? There's a whole bunch of people that don't get the same opportunity. And so, and so the angel goes in and stirs the water, and only one person gets healed. I want to show you a scripture today. Matthew chapter, um, chapter 4, verse 23. Because um, Jesus is totally different to the angels. If the angel comes down three times a year, um, and I say three times a year because I've been studying it, um, uh, if the angel comes down three times a year, um, and then Jesus comes down... Uh, quite often and he's around us quite often then uh, maybe uh, you want to read this scripture Matthew chapter 4 verse 23 says Jesus was going throughout Galilee teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and listen to this he was healing every kind of disease and every sick every kind of sickness among the people in some translations it says that he healed everyone he came into contact with. Jesus healed everyone that he came into contact with. And you're thinking, wow, how different, how much of a contrast between the angel and Jesus. And I know that um, for some of you guys, maybe you're into spiritual things and maybe you might read some tarot cards or you might, uh, you, you might get a, a spiritual medium uh, to give you a, a, a some sort of reading or something, or, or maybe you're into um, to, to like paganism or witchcraft and stuff like that. But what I am going to say to you today is this. You may have found at some point just once that you heard a story about an angel healing one person. But if you come under the lordship of Jesus Christ today, then Jesus is able to heal all. And there's no limit to the amount of people that he can touch and no, no limit to the amount of people that he can heal today. In fact, I've written down three words in my notes today. I want to tell you about how um, omnipotent Jesus is or omnipotent. Jesus has no limit to the amount of power that he has. His power is without limits. Whereas the angel might only heal one person, Jesus can heal all where the angel might be able to be a warring angel, you know, so there's moments in the Old Testament where a warring angel would come down and he might fight a battle, he might fight a war, and he might win a battle. But the Bible says that Jesus won't just, um, won't just fight a battle. Oh no, Jesus, the warrior God, he will wipe away all of creation, all of heaven, in one foul move because he has so much more power than the angels. In fact, it says that the angels and all of the things in heaven and on earth earth uh, just like his footstool that he rests on um, and Jesus today um, Jesus today is so much more powerful he is 
un- he has unlimited power. And, you know, and, and as soon as I say that, I know Liam's thinking, oh yeah, a bit like, uh, a bit like that guy off of that Star Trek, you know, unlimited power. No, Jesus isn't like evil and all that sort of stuff, like that geezer. No, Jesus has unlimited grace and unlimited love and unlimited power in Jesus' name. He is so good. He has no limit to the amount of power that he possesses because what he says happens. The words that come out of his mouth are power in Jesus' name. He is awesome in power. He is glorious in power. He is amazing and totally like if we were playing a video game, me and my son, Liam would be saying, oh, that Jesus, he's overpowered, uh, which means that he's got so much more power than anyone else. You know, it's a bit like if you're into Marvel and all that sort of stuff, you might go, well, you know, Spider-Man sort not Spider-Man, sorry, Superman sort of ruins it for everyone really, doesn't he? Because he's sort of unbeatable. You know what I mean? Like, he's unbeatable. He's got all of the tricks, hasn't he? Goes at the speed of light, and then, like, fire comes out of his eyes, and, you know, all these sorts of things, and, you know, he's, he's, just, he's just next level. He can even turn back time. Even so, Spider-Man isn't as powerful as Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting a bit carried away this morning. I'm loving this. Um, here's another word. Jesus is omnipresent. Omnipresent, which means that there is no limit to his presence, which means that he can be in all places at the same time. That's what a lot of people feel uh, when, when they hear the word omnipresent. There's no limit to his presence. And where the angel could only come down, at, um, uh, well, apparently came down once uh, once every like three times a year and healed one person um jesus is able to be in all places uh, all of the time and not just is he in all places which means that he's here with me right now and he's there with you right now it's not just that he's there and able to be everywhere it's also that he's able to do that all of the time because he's outside of time and so he is um, omnipresent, which means that he can do that all of the time in all of the places. Um, but there's also no limit to the amount of presence that you can experience today. And maybe you say, once I felt a little bit of Jesus in my heart. Well, today I want to tell you that it doesn't have to be a little bit of Jesus. Us Pentecostals are always going, more Lord, more Lord, I want more of you, God. Well, here's the thing. If you know and if you've experienced the unlimited presence of Christ, then You don't need more. There is no more. You've got it all. You've got every last bit of it. And maybe if you were just to open yourself up to him and to open yourself up to his unlimited presence, then maybe you might just be uh, finding yourself in a place of, I tend to find myself in a place of overwhelming goodness. I I find myself in a place of overwhelming power, of overwhelming love. I find myself in a place of overwhelming healing and he heals my heart, he heals my body. And that's who Jesus is because when he comes and he presences with us, we find that in his unlimited presence and in his unlimited power, we find ourselves floating into a place where we can experience unlimited grace and love and peace in our lives. And maybe that's what you seek today. And I want to tell you the answer is Jesus Christ. The Lord God Almighty. Here we go. Let me tell you one more, and then I'm going to go on to uh, go on and go on to a little something else. And I'm really aware that I'm already like getting close to time. Anyway, one more. Jesus is omniscient. That means unlimited knowledge. He has all of the knowledge. He knows everything about you today. He names every no, sorry. He counts every hair on your head. He knew you uh, before the beginning of the time. He knew who you were, and he knows everything about you. And yet he loves you. And yet he loves me, even though he knew uh, before the beginning of the time that I was going to be the worst sinner. I was going to be the, the the worst person. I was going to be worthless in my sight and in the world's sight. In my my community site in their view I was worthless and yet Jesus knew me before the beginning of the time and he chose to go to the cross that I might know his glorious power his riches and his wonderful grace Jesus chose to lay down his life showing that I was worthy I was worth something I was worth um, his life being shed on the cross is what he says about me even if the world says about me Darren you're worthless Darren you're you're not you're no good for nothing what what good could come out of Spencer Estate or more 
Moreland Estate or Birchwood Estate or whatever estate you live on today, if, if you feel like you've been living a life uh, where the world around you says that you're worthless, then let it be known that Jesus, knowing all these things about you, he knew what you were going to do yesterday, he knows what you're doing today, and he knows what you're going to do tomorrow. And yet, and yet, in our sin, in our, in our heartache, in our shame, in all of those things, in our walking away from him and not listening to him, in our choosing not to, not to be friends with him and not to follow him, in all of that stuff, he still goes to the cross and dies in our place, saying that he is willing to put his whole life on the line for me and you, giving us worth. If you felt worthless before now, then let it be known that today you have worth in the eyes of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So let me just tell you a little bit more about this scripture. And uh, in a few moments after I finish this next little section of my talk, I'm going to give you an opportunity to come to faith in Jesus Christ. I'm going to give you an opportunity to choose to follow him. I'm going to give you an opportunity to choose to put your trust in him and have a relationship with him. The scriptures say that when we're in a relationship with Jesus, we're born again, we're made afresh, we're made new, and that we get a whole new start. And even in the midst of our whole new start, even if we keep on doing things wrong because we, we, we struggle with things like that even in the midst of that we still get to be his friend his follower his family if we just confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us and so today I want to tell you that um, that Jesus has an awesome awesome future ahead of you he has gone before you if you're a believer in Jesus today if you're his friend today if you've chosen to follow him then he has gone before you, it says. He is praying for you, firstly, so that you will definitely come through to salvation. You will definitely make it to heaven because we believe in the perseverance of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so he has gone ahead of you, is praying, is trying to make life a bit easier for you, make it so you're not so overwhelmed by the things around you. And then on top of that, he's also, it says, building you a mansion in heaven. Let me tell you about what time of year um, this angel would come and stir up the water, okay? Let me tell you what time of year this angel would come and stir up this water. Three times a year, they say, the tradition says, it was always when there was loads of sacrifices in the temple. So it would be the three, big, um, the three big festivals of the Jewish calendar, you know, like Passover, Yom, Yom Kippur, all that sort of stuff. Um, the angel apparently would turn up whenever the sacrifices were being made. The tradition says that as the sacrifices were made in the temple, that some of the blood from the sacrifice would float down aqueducts and through the ground um, not on purpose, but accidentally, some of the blood would flow down into the pool of Bethesda. And then what would happen is, as the blood of the sacrifice touched God's people, they would be healed in Jesus' name. Because what we know today is that that was a foreshadowing of the blood of Jesus. And so in that moment, not only is an angel not quite as good as Jesus, because he can only come and stir up the water once every three, three months or whatever, and, and, because, and because he wasn't able to heal everyone, he's only able to heal one person. If we're saying it was an angel, then we can also point to, according to tradition, um, the, uh, the blood sacrifice of the animals. And the animals could only cover a uh, a certain amount of uh, of your of your uh, ill body they could only cover a certain amount of and if you're really into your theology actually they can't cover any of your sin anymore because Isaiah said that the Lord says I delight not in your vain sacrifices I do not I do not enjoy your animal sacrifice anymore I want you to have a heart that is sacrificed to the Lord Jesus Christ and so essentially what's happening here is tradition has it that as the blood from the sacrifice comes down into the pool as it mingles with the water people would get healed so I want to read I'm not going to read it I'm just going to quote it Isaiah said that it's through his it is through his broken body it's through his blood uh, because he was sacrificed because he was broken we are made whole essentially in Jesus we find our wholeness in Jesus is sacrifice in his blood that covers all sin that covers all sickness that even the rocks in the earth they cry out for his salvation the stars they cry for Jesus to enter into his creation so that his sacrifice could forgive them of their sin because even the stars 
have gone against Christ. Creation itself has gone against Christ. That's what the thorns and the thistles were all about in the book of Genesis. And so the, the rocks themselves cry out for the Savior. The earth groans. Creation groans waiting for the Savior. And so when Jesus' his blood, when his sacrifice uh, is taking place on that cross, the, the fact is you don't need to jump in a pool to receive your healing. You don't need to go to church to receive your healing. You can just sit there at home listening to the preacher of the word, listening to what God is saying into your life today, and you can receive the healing of Jesus Christ because his blood covers all of the things in your life, including your body, your soul, your spirit. And today he wants to heal your spirit. He wants to bring you back to life. The Bible says this, it says, and let, let me just say this, in a few moments, you're going to have this awesome opportunity to say yes to Jesus, just in a few moments, okay? The Bible says this, every single person has chosen to walk away from God. Every single person has said no to Jesus. Every single person has chosen to go their own way. Every man in history except for Jesus. And it says that we all need a sacrifice, some sort of sacrifice, in order to be put right with God. And the only sacrifice that will do the job for all of mankind, all of creation, the stars, the rocks, um, me, Darren, the sheep, the, the goats, my dog, Coco, um, who, whoever it is, wherever you are, the only thing that could put you right with God is an amazing, absolutely omnipotent, an omnipresent, an omniscient saviour dying on a cross. Because Jesus is so much better than the goats and the bulls. He's so much better than the angels. He's worth so much more. And so with his sacrifice, we can be put right with God. And if you choose today, I want to be put right with God. I want to follow Jesus. I want to follow God. I want to have a relationship with the creator God in heaven. If that's your choice, then the Bible says, as soon as you choose to turn towards him, so if you were facing uh, the world and everything in the world, the world's expectations, the world's idea of success, if you were facing and chasing after that, and then you choose to turn around in the opposite direction and choose to follow Follow Jesus Christ. The Bible says that he uh, appoints his sacrifice, his blood sacrifice to you. And that blood sacrifice pays for all of the things you've ever done wrong. In that moment, as soon as you turn from one to the other, what happens is you are totally and utterly forgiven of anything you've ever done. For some, what happens is their body gets healed as well. For others, their mind begets, like, starts to get healed. Other things start to happen. Your life starts to change. You find yourself living in peace rather than drama. You find yourself living in love rather than hate. You find yourself living in, in absolute like, glory instead of shame. Man, I've been set free from all of those things, and I want to have you being set free from those things as well. So today, if you choose to follow Jesus instead of the world, the Bible says in that moment you're born again. It says, because Jesus rose from the grave, it shows and gives evidence to the fact that he can raise up your spirit. Even after your body dies, you can be raised again to life, which means that you get eternal life. You get to keep on going. You get to, uh, the Bible says, literally, as you die, you're made alive. Isn't that amazing that there's more to life than this place where, you know, we work all day, we work hard for uh, for. Boris to take our money off us in the form of tax. We, we, we pay our rent, we do everything else, and then we have like two quid left over at the end of the week. And why? What, what's two quid worth? Nothing, right? We can't do anything with that. It's almost like we're a slave to society. And today, Jesus is offering you liberation. He's offering you freedom. He's offering you healing. He's offering you heaven, where he's gone before you to build you a mansion. And today, you can start saving up treasure in heaven as soon as you turn towards Jesus and turn away from the world. And it's as simple as that. When you say yes to him, and yes, I want to accept your sacrifice, Jesus, as mine. I want to accept your payment for my wrongdoing. In that moment, what happens is, the Bible says you are brought back to life. You are made whole and new. You get a whole new start. You get a new beginning. It says you're born again. You're a new creation. It says that in that moment, suddenly you've entered from death into life. You've entered into eternity. 
You've entered into God's kingdom and you're born as a new son or daughter of the king. And once you're born as a new son or daughter of the king, you can't be unborn as a new son or daughter of the king. That's it. You're in. Even if you carry on doing stupid things, do not matter. You're still a son or daughter of the king. And so today, I want to invite you in this moment, and in a few moments, we'll do some prayer and stuff. We'll have another song, and then we're going to pray for healing and stuff. We want you to respond to what God is saying. But in this moment, I want to give you an opportunity to come to faith in Jesus Christ. I want to give you an opportunity to enter into a relationship with him, to turn away from the world and back towards him to start following him. I've got this little booklet just here. I've had this here for ages. This is my, um, I, I use this little booklet to help people to follow Jesus when they first start. It's 10 little sessions, about half an hour each, where we just look at the basics of the Christian faith, the basics of Jesus and who he is and who he wants to be for you. And then what we do is we just follow through that book and I help you. And that's what we call making a disciple. You become my disciple or I become your mentor in the faith. And then we go on a journey together. Eventually you might want to get baptized in water. You'll love it here. We've got a hot tub. <laughs> but I want to ask you today, Do you want to follow Jesus? Because he's so much better than animals. He's so much better than angels. He's so much stronger. So much more loving. He has so much more peace in him. His life is a life worth trying to follow. Trying to live up to. Trying to copy. Trying to emulate. Do you want to follow Jesus today? If you do, then your prayer is real simple today. It's as simple as, today, God, I choose to stop being held captive by the world. Today, God, I want to be set free to follow Jesus. Maybe you want to pray that prayer with me. You want to pray that prayer with me just now. Maybe close your eyes if this is you. Put your hand on your heart. Jesus, today I choose to turn away from the expectations of the world. And I choose to turn to you. Forgive me today for the things that I've done wrong. And help me to live a life for you. Amen. If that's your prayer today, we would love to uh, help you along that journey. We've got loads of online materials. We've got some amazing uh, like uh, little things like this book and stuff. We've got some, uh, like we can do some Zoom calling and stuff, and we can help you on this journey. But if today you've chosen to follow Jesus, um, the Bible says, if you deny me in front of men, then I'll deny you in front of my Father, said Jesus. So today, if, you ha- if, if you're saying, yes, I'm going to choose to follow Jesus, you need to let someone know. You can let us know on the comments. You can let your neighbors know. You can let your mum know. You can let your daughter know. You can let everyone know. Let them know today that you've chosen to turn away from the world and towards Jesus. And maybe let them know that, you know, the best place to find yourself in Jesus' presence is in a place where God resides in amongst his people. The church. Not a building. Just a community, which at the moment is online. That's where we meet with God. So if that's you today, then let us know. We want to help you along that journey. In the meantime, we're going to play uh, one song. We're just going to play one song, and then, uh, and then we're going to come back, and uh, we're going to respond to your responses. So please do let us know. If you need prayer today, if you need healing, um, we believe Jesus can heal today. We really do. Remember, he's omnipresent, he's omnipotent, he's omniscient. He knows you, and he wants to heal you today. So if this is you, then respond. If you'd like to ask any questions about my talk, then respond, ask the questions, and me and Pastor Harry will aim to, uh, aim to answer some of your questions. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, we're going to have another song. Amen. upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you 
praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He is for us. He is for us. In 